This is the final seminar notes from me. Um, so this is the Thursday. We've got two sessions. We've got the financial literacy, apprentice, and we've got the blog surgery. So you're probably going to need about an hour and a half for the apprentice, and then you'll be going to need about an hour for blog surgery, and obviously you've got a break in there as well. So we start off, this is all on Prezi. Now, if you say to um, the students that, this is using a model that you would do with children in an entrepreneurial lesson, a financial literacy lesson. This is something a lot of schools are doing now over the course of a week. Usually it's called like a wow week or it's called um, an entrepreneurial week. So this is something that I did with the year five, a really good cross-curricular project. So we know that this works. Okay, their lesson objective is to explore, evaluate, and to ref reflect on how financial literacy can be developed in Key Stage 2. So they're going to be following a lesson. They're going to need to pretend to be children. Um, so this has been used with the year five, as I said. There's loads of different cross-curricular skills that they need to track and be aware of throughout. So really important that they're keeping notes throughout. And this is a good one to reflect on their blog. Okay. So we get into it. You follow the arrows through. <clears throat> obviously talk to them a little bit about maths tracking so get them to think about what LNF skills they're using what numeracy skills they're going to be using don't need to spend long on this we've talked about doing maths warm up so they can scan these and they will take them through to some maths warm ups but you're going to need to play these videos right then good morning good morning Nick nice shirt and then you go through, so you don't need to do much. You can play these videos through. They need to follow those through. You can talk to them, get them warmed up, ask them these questions. They should be a bit of fun. Put them in there. Sorry, you should, sorry, I should have already said. Um, put them in their groups to start. So they're going to need to be in groups of four or five. Go in groups of three if they want. No smaller than three and then get them to answer these, get them to talk about these. Okay, so you talk to them that the apprentice challenge, each of the videos will talk you through the steps. It's really easy as a tutor to do this. Basically, they've got a budget of £60. Talk to them about how many schools now are letting children run projects such as this. So they're going to be running a school disco. So they talk, to, they talk about, first they need, to, they need to estimate how many people will be attending the event. So obviously they need to think about, well, how many are in the school, how many would potentially be sick, what age groups are available, all those things. So they need to start to use their reasoning skills. So these are the numbers you, re, you let them estimate first. And then the next step, you give them the numbers. So you've got here. They estimate how many will attend the disco in total. They need to write down, they need to keep track of all of this. First thing they need to do is choose their DJ. Come on, that vinyl Richie. I mean, come on. <laughs> all right, uh, so they have to choose theirs. And then obviously there's a lot of reasoning skills that go on there. There's no right or wrong answer. They've got £60 to spend. They can't go over that budget. Ideally, they don't want to... Um, go too much under either so they need to think about their DJ so they need to talk about what DJ they're going to get they also then need to choose their venue so they've got a church hall or a school hall and they need to consider their ways they can make profit they need to think about catering now for a lot of them they will immediately think about just going to Asda or going to Tesco's but obviously talk to them about, you know, they can use the internet, they can use eBay, they can even use cash and carry. So again, as we do with children, they need to plan and record all of their spend. They need to make a mind map of how they're going to make a maximise budget. And they need to keep a running balance sheet. So I've given an example here. They could use Excel. They can use numbers on the iPads. They could just use a pen and paper. But they need a balance sheet. Really important there. And obviously that's going to be tra tracking their LNF. Here we've got a little bit about profit and loss. So talk to them about how you can actually maximize your budget. 
talk to them about how they could actually generate income. So ticket sales, they could actually charge to come. There could be party games they charge for. They could sell food and drink. You've got to love a hot dog at a sweaty disco. Uh, it's a raffle. <laughs> You could buy a photo booth, obviously have a look online for that. I mean, groups last year got really innovative and there were some projecting they were going to make about 500 quid from this. So again, we're encouraging that. It's a big part of the four purposes. Entrepreneurial thinking is a big part of that. So definitely encourage that. So before we invite them back to the boardroom, the boardroom will be at the end is where they will present to you and the rest of the groups to see if they've actually met the success criteria. So they do that. Then there's the boardroom. So Alan Sugar invites them to the boardroom and then they have to vote on which one they would choose. Pretty much they all vote for their own and then it'll be your final say. Um, think about those that are trying to make money. If any have spent over, well, they're all immediately out. And then at the end, think about reflecting on what we've used, think about um, how we could assess, think about any formative, summative assessments and think about all the skills that we've actually been through. It's quite a fun session. They get really into it. Um, some will be really into it, others won't be so into it, so maybe they need a little bit of encouragement. But get them to take pictures throughout. Some of them went all in last year and they designed posters for theirs. They designed... Um, one even designed a small trailer for theirs. They can do whatever they like. But again, everything they do, get them to put on the blog would be awesome. So that doesn't look like much, but actually they get into it and it takes about an hour and a half, as I said. Okay. And then the final thing they're going to do is, so in preparation for their informal submission, they have been told they need to bring along with them one of their drafted posts so it doesn't matter even if they've just done a few titles and a paragraph that's fine but we need to see something from theirs so in the session keep it quite open get them to read each other's get them to talk about it get them to if they haven't done anything well then give them a little bit of time to try and do something on their adobe spark blogs again gem is going to put in here she's going to put um expectations of the blog which you can copy from the module handbook again she'll put in the marking criteria and then she'll put in, in another example of a blog and then really important that you then go around and have a look at other people's in the groups have a look at what they've done you can offer them feedback there and then um, but this should be a time when they're looking at each other's if they haven't done anything, now is the time they need to do something in this session, so they need to put something together. This is a really useful session because it's the last time we're going to see them. So if they haven't made a start and there's still quite a gap till their deadline's due, take some notes. So I take their little notepad around with me um, and make some notes. There'll be the common things people are doing well and there's the really common things people are doing not so well. So things like, you know, not... Um, referencing enough not supporting ideas maybe using too many web sources to support ideas not having enough multimedia you might notice and it drives me mad will have done so much digital stuff um that sorry i'm just realizing this is week two sorry no the informal submission is for week four. Sorry, again, I've been teaching all day. <laughs> I'm half asleep. But this is still, don't worry about them having to prepare um, a blog post for this one. But again, they just need to have a look through a blog post. They can look at each other's. Sorry, in week four is when they do that. And the informal submission is week four. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead here. In week two, again, they're just looking at an example of one of last year's and they are going to assess that so they probably are going to only need about 40 minutes for this so you can spend a bit longer on the apprentice wow what a long day i've had sorry <laughs> so yeah the blog surgery is basically just to flag to them the good ones will have already started to write you can have a look at theirs if they're happy to share with the group then they can. What I did last year as well, which worked really well, is I got um, 
the whiteboard marker out and we just started to mind map some um, of the numeracy and some of the digital blogs and what could go in there and that really helped them as well. Um, we also just had a look on the reading and uh, resources on Met Search. We started to just find some uh, reading together. So this session really, 30 to 40 minutes on the blogs. Some of them may not have set up their blogs yet. So it's just a mop up session really to make sure that they're starting to think about this. So sorry for the con confusion there. I was thinking this is week four. It's definitely not. This is week two. So they just need to look at another example. And if they've got anyone else, if any of the good ones have done it, you can share theirs as well. Sorry for any confusion. <laughs>